have you ever gone like to try on shoes before? And they're like, and you have this size. They're like, oh no, but we have it in the back, you know, or you're at a restaurant or you're at the grocery store and you're like, hey, do you have any bananas? And it's like, well, there's more in the back. I'll go get them out. And she reminded me that our God is a God who says there's, there's more in the back. Like he's good at, at first of all, surprising us, hearing us, being with us, um, but also filling our empty hands with good things. And so there's always more in the back. And I think faith allows me to, to slow down, to walk a little slower, to believe that life is my friend, for me to be here and to believe that there is more in the back, that I am not forgotten, that I'm not alone, that I am not just floating through this life, but that I am seen and known. Hi everyone, welcome back to the Purple Stars Podcast. My name is Sarah, I'm your host, and I am certain today's guest will fill your hearts with hope and inspiration. He's an author, poet, and speaker. He has such a kind heart and is not afraid to dive into the messy parts of life. Please welcome <laughs> Tana Olson. Hello, it's good to be here. I'm so excited to have you on the show. As I said earlier, I have been following you on Instagram for, I don't actually don't know for how long, but I remember the very first post I saw, like you had all these handwritten notes and yeah. I was like, wow, that's so nice. Not many people um, write with their hands anymore, you know, like everyone types <laughs> and I'm just such a big fan of handwritten cards, handwritten notes. So that was the very first visual that caught my attention. And then obviously everything like your words, just um, so much depth. And especially during COVID, I was following you even more intensively because it mm. was giving me hope. It was giving me comfort. So I am very glad you're on the show and you're going to share your hope with our Purple Stars family. Oh, I'm excited to be here. Yeah. Thanks for saying that. Tanner, um, for those in your audience who don't know you yet, could you mm. please share your journey, and I know it's probably a really long one, but also I am, despite like following you, I am so curious what made Tanner, Tanner of today? Oh, that's, that's a loaded question. We could be here for about an hour to answer that. Um, I'll give you the, uh, I, I guess the, the, the brief rundown. Uh, maybe we start with where I'm at now. Like now I'm an author, a poet, a speaker. Uh, so I've got a couple of books out and I travel around the country sharing poetry, telling stories, offering hope at churches and schools and coffee shops and, and really wherever. Um, but I never thought this is what I would be doing. I didn't think that I was going to be a writer. But growing up, I loved basketball and I loved, I loved music. Uh, but my, my dream of being in the NBA didn't really work out when you stop growing at five foot 10 and you have terrible knees. It's not really a great combination for, playing in the in the NBA. But I loved basketball. And then I also loved music. And so I thought, well, if I can't play basketball, maybe I could be in a band, but I can't sing. <laughs> and I can't figure out how to play music. I don't have I don't have rhythm, can't even spell it half the time. And so I was like, but I was so drawn to the way that that music made me feel. And I loved the way that basketball made me come alive. And so I wanted to find something where I could have a little bit of basketball, but also a little bit of music. And for me, that just kind of landed on, on writing, on poetry. So throughout high school, throughout college, I would just write. I would just sit down and write and write and write. And I never thought anything would come of it. After college, I worked a couple of different jobs. I worked coffee shops, worked at churches, worked at camps. But the entire time, I found myself digging deeper, looking inside, asking questions, writing through things. Uh, and then I decided, you know, maybe I'll just start sharing poetry on stage. And so I started doing that. And let me tell you, the first stuff, the early stuff that I wrote was so bad. It wasn't even close to good. It was terrible. <laughs> uh, but I, I always tell students that like, if you're willing to be bad at something, you might just become good at it, or you might just become comfortable with your style or what it is that you're trying to, to share with the world. And so I just kept at it. So like 2013, I started writing, sharing, creating. 
started a blog, started recording poetry. And from there, I mean, that's kind of where it all started. And then I just been working, writing, creating, traveling, sharing, and trying to offer a little bit of hope into a world, share a little bit of light in the darkness. And uh, it's crazy that this is my real job. Every day I wake up and I'm like, I do not know how this is my job. Like, how do I get to do this? But I'm really thankful and I don't want to, uh, I don't want to waste the opportunity uh, to share something good with the world. Two things that really touched my heart. One, I'm so happy you mentioned be willing to be bad at something. Mm -hmm. Because so many people have this, they only see, they really want what you have, but they're not willing to put in the work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and they are like, they don't want to be an amateur, whether it, whether it's for a hobby or, mm -hmm. or something professional, they're sure. just embarrassed to not be good at it. They also mm -hmm. don't want to grind. They don't want to like, <laughs> go through the challenges. So yeah. um, also, you know, fear of failure, fear of success. So, so many components come with that. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm happy you mentioned that because it's just, It's a reality check, you know, like mm -hmm. I think we can all be who we want to be. Of course, as you said, like, you know, if you stop growing or if you don't, if you can't think, <laughs> obviously that doesn't work. Not, not going to work out too well. <laughs> But anything else, if it's um, possible. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think um, if we put in the work and if we put in the belief in ourselves, And also the patience. I think that's a big part as well. Like we'll, we'll always get there. And mm -hmm. uh, I really loved how you, like your eyes lit up when you said, oh, I'm so grateful for this. And oh, yeah. it's, it's such a great reminder that that's what life wants us to feel like. Mm -hmm. Because I think a lot of people get the impression, uh, you know, everyone around me doesn't like their job. Like they mm -hmm. dread when Monday comes around, they're waiting for the weekends, for the vacation, for Christmas. So if everyone around me has that feeling, that's probably how life is supposed to be. And I want this to be a reminder for anyone out there. We are born to enjoy life and mm -hmm. our professional life, our personal life. So Tanner, I'm just so glad you brought that up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I believe it's one of those things that I, I it's I believe, but it's also a difficult thing to uh, live out, like to uh, to enjoy it all, uh, because it is. I mean, it's full of ups and downs and darkness and uncertainties. But like you know, at the end of it, like, I, I want to enjoy this life, this gift that I've been given. And I think for me, the way that I I want to enjoy it is is by offering a little bit of hope to the world through writing and poetry and uh storytelling and, and all that kind mm. of stuff but but yeah I, i think to get to where you want to be it does take a lot of patience a lot of trust and uh, and you just got to go slow you gotta like you can't I, often when i when i talk with uh with like when i'm at schools and i talk with kids um they're like you know how did you you know i want to do what you're doing how do i get there and i'm like well you have to you got it's like the difference between making brisket and heating up a burrito in the microwave like you can you can just try to go fast but like this is like a slow cook kind of life it's gonna yeah. and it's gonna be better when you take your time with it and you let everything cook uh yeah that's what i think <laughs> i love the analogy that's so good it's so 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 good and you you shared a poem which is I think just so fitting for continuing our conversation and it's don't skip to the end, sit with what is and continue to let the light pour in. Tanner, mm -hmm. I'm wondering what is the story behind the poem? And also how do you think this message can resonate with people who are drawn to shortcuts and looking for quick fixes? And as a poet, I'm also wondering like why Why do you think people tend to be afraid of walking the path and also mm. sitting with what is? And because you shared on one of your podcasts, you love to observe and you love to think about things. So that's why I'm wondering, okay, I'm sure you have thought about this so much. So what is your take on that? Well, I, 
you know, I don't, I don't necessarily remember writing that particular poem. I think when you write so much, you're just kind of like, it all kind of just kind of runs together. And so for me, mm-hmm. I'm like, well, I, yes, I wrote that at some point. I, I do think that I wrote that, or at least something along the lines. When I read that back, what I think of is uh, seeing other people be where I want to be in life. Mm-hmm. Right. Like whether that's they, they're they in the job that I want to have, the position, the whatever it may be. Uh, but to remind myself to don't skip to the like, like wh- what is is not bad. Like where you are may not be where you want to be, but where you are is where you're supposed to be. And so if we can just uh, trust like God's going to get us to where he's going to get us and believe that and continue to admire and see the good gifts that he's placed in front of us because like it's there like goodness is all around us mercy is with us like there are good things here um and so to sit with it and to trust that good is on the way i think it's hard to to it's hard to not be where you want to be Uh, it's hard to sit in the dirt when you're ready to break through and enjoy the sunlight. But there's a process to it all. Um, Mm. And I'm learning that the process is not a punishment. It's just how life goes. And life doesn't, as we all know, life doesn't always go the way that we think it's going to go or the way that we want it to go. But it still goes and we go on and we can go on by sitting with what is and looking for the light as it continues to pour in. The process is not a punishment. So good what you just said. I think if we start to be more comfortable with the uncomfortable, it really Mm -hmm. increases our level of happiness and joy and gratitude and connection and just everything in life. If Mm -hmm. we if we don't want to get rid of it, and also if we come to the acceptance, this is part of life and if i want to shut down or shut out Mm -hmm. the uncomfortable parts the pain and the suffering i'm shutting up in my entire life then i'm just existing and not alive anymore Mm -hmm. yeah no that's that's good it's but you know i think about those people who they're, they're trying everything that they can to, to not be where they are, and yet they still feel stuck. Or it's the couple who just can't seem to get pregnant, or the person who just wants to be married, but they just can't find the right person. You know, and, and so I think when, I, when I'm writing, I'm, I'm thinking about all these different people and these, just these situations and these scenarios. And so, like, I, I don't want my words to come across as like, I don't see you, but I see you so much that here is this invitation that I think is true for all of us, right? To to don't skip to the end, but sit with what is. And it's so hard to sit with what is when what is is not what you what you want life to be. But mm-hmm. there's something there's something in it for us, uh, whether to learn from or to help us grow. Um, to strengthen us as we step into into what is unknown. What does life look like for you when you are not sitting with what is, and what helps you to move from not sitting with it to sitting with it? <laughs> I, I'm I'm good. I, one of the things I'm really good at. I don't want to brag on your podcast, but I will. Is I'm really good at staying distracted of not, um, I'm right. <laughs> I can watch as much TV. I, I'm so good at TV. I'm so good at sitting. I'm so good at not being healthy, <laughs> but I, what I think for me, what it, what it looks like is, um, I, I need, I need the silence. I need the solitude. I need to step away from screens uh, and give myself like a, like a place to breathe and be. And, and to wrestle with the hard stuff. I mean, this is like, uh, it's very, uh, well, it's, I think it's pretty biblical, but it's also, it's, it's, it's difficult. Um, but it's also refreshing, like to be able to step away, to turn off the noise and to go sit with whatever hum is happening inside of your head. Um, and so I, you know, for me, I try to do that 
when I drive, like when I'm driving, I am, there's no music on in the car. Usually like I am just sitting, like, I can't tell you the last time. And I know where I'm on a podcast right now, but I can't tell you the last time that I like sat down and listened to a podcast because the mm-hmm. silence, the, the, the time of solitude is just so precious and I want to enjoy it. I, I don't think we need to be always um, consuming and taking information in or clicking on the next thing or looking forward. Like what if we just took some time to look back or to look inside or to sit still with our hands open, ready to receive whatever's coming our way. Does that answer the question? I don't know. Then I started rambling. (laughs) Absolutely. Absolutely. I shared in another podcast that Paulo Coelho, like I read in one of his books and I can only rephrase in my own words that Mm -hmm. we are, we are never disconnected. We are merely distracted. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think part of life is figuring out what are my own personal ways of distraction. Like you mentioned, you know, like TV and things like that. Everyone has their way of distraction. And I think it's so good to find those out mm-hmm. because sometimes we have like, let's say five, six different ways of distraction and if you only have one, things might still flow. But if you add yeah. the other one, then like it gets already like a little rusty. So um, I think it's good to have a list of knowing. For me, for example, I know distraction can be a little bit done too much suddenly on social media. You know, I'm there like to do my work. But then suddenly I'm like, yeah. oh, this reel is great. And this reel. And then I'm like, oh, yeah. I want to check out their book. So it goes yeah. like from one thing to the other. And um and then like another distraction for me is, it, I mean, it, that's how, just how I like is, yeah. see it is when I don't cook enough for myself. Mm-hmm. Like it's a way of like, you know, like I, I'm so busy with everything else that I don't take the time to actually nourish myself. So I have yeah. like all these little and bigger things. And, yeah. and then I also know, okay, when I am connected, like I pray, I take my breaths. When I'm in the supermarket uh, waiting, I'm not taking up my phone. I'm just observing. When I'm like at the traffic light, I don't take up my phone. I'm just saying a little (laughs) gratitude prayer. So I feel like it's, it's like, it it sounds like so cliche, but it's just little things that make such a big difference. Well, the little things are the big things. I'm I'm with you too. Like when I don't get my phone out or when I leave, have you ever just like left your phone behind? It's like you should yeah. get an award every time you leave your phone behind. You should get an <laughs> award because like you're just like, nope, I'm on to the next. Uh, for mm-hmm. me, like my phone, my phone is, is the biggest distraction because there's a lot of good things on there and there are a lot of really yeah. bad things, too. But like, I mean, that's how I, I mean, that is one of the ways that I stay connected with friends and family. But it is also a way that disconnects me from my friends and family. And so knowing like my limits or yeah. my little ticks or whatever it may be, um, I, I think we just have to be. You're, you're very good at this is, is to be honest with ourselves, take an inventory and say, this is, this is when I'm healthy. This is when I'm unhealthy, or this is when I'm happy. And this is why I'm happy. And I, I think for me, it comes down to like, you know, there, I, was, I was on my phone, I think it was the other night. And I was just like, I threw it across the room, like onto the couch because I needed it later. But like, I just tossed it. Cause I was like, I, this isn't living. And I was like, I'm not living right now. I'm just like, watching somebody cook and then mm-hmm. dance and then dance and cook. And it's not like, I don't know what, what are we doing with the internet? So I just kind of got fed up with that and was like, this isn't living man. Um, so yeah, I agree with you. Yeah. It's, and I also think in order to do this inventory, we got our, I know to put it in your work, walk a little slower I want to like mention your podcast and your book named with that title. And first of all, how good is the title? That's oh, one yeah. thing I want to say. Thanks. And then I'm wondering, how did life invite you to walk a little slower before you then extended that invitation to others? Oh, that's a fantastic question. Uh, and you know, it's a good question because I had to say that it was a good question, especially like on podcasts. It's really just how we, we create, we say something is a good question so that we can think in our heads before we give the answer. Um, <laughs> so there's a couple of reasons why I, 
named it Walk a Little Slower. Well, to be honest, like that wasn't the original title of the book. The original title of the book I was something that I was excited about and I shared it with some friends and they were like, that is not a good title. I wanted to name it uh, From Under the Camphor Tree which is a poem in the book. One of my favorites that I, li- I like from, and they were like, that's not a great title. And then I was like, well, what about walk a little slower? And they're like, that's a much better title. Um, and I, after a while I was like, okay, that's what I want. But I think I was afraid to title it walk a little slower because it would be this constant reminder for me to actually do the thing that I know I'm supposed to do or the way that I believe life is to be lived. I'm very good. As you can maybe tell from that last sentence is just talking fast of going on to the next thing of kind of skipping, kind of skipping ahead. So I, I, I write a lot of the things that I need to hear. I need to be reminded of, of the truth. And f- for me, like, you know, those four words walk a little slower. Like I see them every single day. Like this book, like, I mean, I have copy sitting like right here. I send out copies every, you know, every day I get to see those four words. Uh, and so it's this constant reminder for me to walk a little slower. I was really like uh, throughout high school, college, and even the years after college, I was always ready to just move on to the next thing. Uh, I think part of me was afraid to sit with what is, uh, and I wanted to just kind of jump ahead, look around the corner, see what's coming coming ahead. Uh, I kind of I wanted to live uh, fast, and I wanted to live without a real faith and without trusting that everything would be okay. Like I needed to see what was around the corner for myself to know that everything was okay, rather than just believing that everything was going to be okay. Um, and so those years, uh, what like the last five or six years, um, I became like a full-time poet and writer in 2019. And then this book came out in I think 2021. And, uh, it took a couple of years to kind of land on it, um, and to learn to walk a little slower, to actually give myself the grace to walk a little slower. Um, to allow myself to to trust that God was actually with me every step of the way, um, and that things were going to be all right. And so now, when I you know I shared this with people, you know it's it's okay to walk a little slower. And um, people are like, I just you know I I don't like doing it. I was like, well, I don't think anybody likes doing it, <laughs> but I think it's a good thing for us to do. Um, yeah. You mentioned. You know, like we rush for life because we want the certainty that things are fine or we rush for life because we don't think that things are fine. Mm -hmm. And that's, it's so great to know that for the audience because whenever I see myself rushing, other than I do really need to rush because I'm late, like (laughs) time-wise, that's a whole other story. That's a whole other story. But if I'm like unnecessarily rushing myself, I'm like, Mm -hmm. okay, I gotta do this, 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 and like, okay, and then like figuring things out. And I also see this with a lot of people that journal, for example, or meditate, Mm -hmm. they're doing this to get a guarantee and a certainty and answers. And like, whenever I see myself holding on to things and like wanting this guarantee and certainty like i try to open my hands and i'm like okay let go so i can receive what god really wants me to receive because if i'm like you know like have the reins really tied there's nothing i can receive like it Mm -hmm. will like fall into my head it will be a little difficult (laughs) (laughs) and so i i really like this mantra walk a little slower my mantra is life is my friend Oh, I like that too. And similar to what you said, oh, people say like, oh, I don't like to walk a little slower. To me, they say, no, how can I believe that if like right now things are not good? And then I explain like, it doesn't mean that life is always good. Mm -hmm. It means life is your friend also when things get tough. Mm. Like life provides you with, the resilience, the gratitude with the right people, the right podcast, the right poem, <laughs> whatever your heart, your mind, your spirit and soul need to go f- get through the darkness and see mm-hmm. the light again and believe in the light till you see it. So, yeah. yeah, I think it's great to have a personal mantra just to repeat yeah. it throughout the day, whatever is mm-hmm. happening. 
my my other mantra i think walk a little slower is one and the other one that i often say is that i'm i'm just happy to be here uh and it's true it, you know some days i i wake up and i'm just happy to be here and then sometimes i'm just the first word and i'm just the last word where i'm just kind of here i'm just okay. here but it kind of similar to what you are you know you know life is is my friend like there are days where like life is you get you know this it's just like amazing like the sun mm -hmm. is shining people are kind the internet correctly connects right like it's just a great day mm -hmm. nothing goes wrong mm -hmm. and you're just happy to be here and then there's those days where the internet doesn't connect and you need it to and your back just hurts and people aren't nice to you and you're not nice to yourself and it's just cloudy and gloomy and you're just kind of here um, mm -hmm. but the reminder is, you know, like I am here and I get to enjoy this gift of life. Uh, so I am just happy to be here, even if I am just here. It's, it's so beautiful how you have two little versions of the mantra to, you know, when it's easy to say that day, I'm happy to be here. And as you mentioned, some days it's more difficult, especially when life throws all sorts of things at mm -hmm. us and and even more so when it's like really heartbreaking things yeah um so it's good to have this okay i am i'm here and i also see this like god saying i'm here true yeah yeah that yeah you can't get away from that like mm -hmm. where you are is right where he is and that is a good place to be absolutely this brings me to my next question you and you might not remember that either that you wrote that <laughs> it's hilarious two things um life is not a puzzle to solve but a gift to enjoy so very matching to what you just said mm -hmm. and then the other one is in the midst of uncertainty and unknown they're already and not yet the hopes and fears we can easily forget that life was meant to be enjoyed how do you think that faith can help people to embrace the present moment, regardless of what they may feel is missing in their life? And when I say faith, I want to um, maybe explain a little bit what mm -hmm. I mean by that. Because we have in the audience people of all sorts of beliefs. Mm -hmm. And I always welcome anyone. And I always say, it's not, I personally call him God. Yeah. But I personally think it's not so important the name we put on what we believe in, but mm -hmm. to come, you know, like remember we all believe in something and that's what we have together. It's not so important to have the discussion about like what do you call it, what do I call it, is it better or not? But to say, okay, what we what connects all of us, there is something higher and we're just humans. And that higher force helps us through life and also makes life better. <laughs> so that's just what I wanted to. <laughs> I love I that you said we are just humans. And yes. I think like for me, I'm like, that nails it. Like we are just like, we're mm -hmm. just humans. And I mean, as I've, as I've talked kind of in the, you know, throughout the podcast already, like, like I believe in like Jesus, like that is like, that's my guy. And so for me, like when we talk about how like life is not a, puzzle to solve, but a gift to enjoy, um, or how I easily forget that life was meant to be enjoyed. I, I think my, my, my personal faith ties me to one who is, is a good, is, he's a good gift giver. I have a, my friend, my friend told me a, a while ago, like she said this, and it's kind of changed my way of how I see God. Um, but you know, when you, have you ever gone like to try on shoes before? And they're like, and you have this size. They're like, oh no, but we have it in the back, you know, or you're at a restaurant or you're at the grocery store and you're like, Hey, do you have any bananas? And it's like, well, there's more in the back. I'll go get them out. And she reminded me that our God is a God who says there's, there's more in the back. Like he's good at, at, first of all, surprising us, hearing us, being with us, um, but also filling our empty hands with good things. 
And so there's always more in the back. And I think faith allows me to, to slow down, to walk a little slower, to believe that life is my friend, for me to be here and to believe that there is more in the back, that I am not forgotten, that I'm not alone, that I am not just floating through this life, but that I am seen and known by a good God who cares for, for his children. What a great analogy with the supermarket. It actually <laughs> reminds me of this um, drawing and you, I'm sure you probably have seen it. There's Jesus and a little girl. The little girl has a teddy bear in her hand, a quite mm -hmm. small teddy bear. And he had like, he says, give me your, you know, give me your teddy bear. And she's like, please not. And he has a huge, way bigger <laughs> teddy bear behind his back. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's a little bit like how I see I like it that. as well. You know, yep. sometimes it's a, <laughs> it's a swap. <laughs> and even if at the first, first, so you're like, oh man, doesn't, doesn't feel good for me. Yeah. I, what, like my faith has the same as I guess I myself has really evolved over the years. Like as a little yeah. child, you know, like we would do like our family prayers together in the evening mm -hmm. and um, we, um, we would read like the kids Bible. But then I remember like I wasn't really reading the Bible afterwards. And my granddad, he got me, I think five years in a row for my birthday, the Bible. And then <laughs> there came a point that I said, granddad, Do you not remember <laughs> that you got me this the last year, the year before, and so on? He said, no, I do remember. I'm like, well, do you get like 10 for one? <laughs> Or what's the reason why you're giving me so many Bibles? And he said, well, I'm hoping that one day you will start reading it. Hmm. And still took a few, like, still went yeah. on and on and on. I did my prayers, but I didn't really read the Bible. And... Yeah, and then at some point I was like, I remember I was actually visiting my family in Salzburg and I took the Bible and I opened it and I said to God, I personally think the Bible is like very complicated and it's like really complex. Like, how do I understand? Give me a little, a little glimpse that like, and hope that I can understand it. And then it said, you know, keep knocking at the doors and your call will be answered. Mm -hmm. And I remember I was crying and I was like, okay, mm -hmm. I'm coming home. Yeah. So I take That's like beautiful. every day the time to read the Bible without expectation. <laughs> and, yeah. but I, but I, and some days I'm like, okay, <laughs> but most days, okay. That's really what my heart needed right now to mm -hmm. comfort me or to give me that extra encouragement um and for example the other day i was like okay give me a sign like this new project mm -hmm. we're doing is it really going to pay off uh because some days you know i have my doubts and then it said there will be a day there will be more fruits there will be more fruits than you can ever harvest mm. and i thought okay that's the okay. very clear sign <laughs> i just keep, i'll just I'll just keep going. I'll just keep trusting. I just, I just keep believing. I just keep going. I just keep yeah. trusting. So, yeah. And, but what I wanted actually to say, other than the Bible, um, I had a friend, and I think I shared this before in the podcast. He's the son of a priest. And mm -hmm. I said to him, How often do you pray? He was like, What do you mean? I'm like, Well, two times, three times, four times. <laughs> and he said, No, I pray all day. Yeah. And that's something that really changed, not just my relationship with God, but with myself, yeah. because mm. throughout the day, I'm coming home. Yeah. You know, wherever I am, I'm coming home and I'm like, okay, this is stressing me out right now. I just have all these conversations and it really helps me to process what I'm experiencing. And I'm much quicker with forgiveness and much quicker mm. with like letting go and surrendering. And by far, like I'm still obviously not lots of room <laughs> to improve, but I do feel it's like giving me so yeah. much. Yeah. When you're, when you're connected to a good giver, everything seems to change. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This being said, any, everything and anything seems to be able to be changed 
Mm-hmm. Can you please read your poem that um, I really would love for you to read? And we talked about that earlier. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. This one's called uh, Create Space. And it goes like this. When you begin to believe life is not the way it should be, may you create space. Create space for waiting. Create space for not knowing. Create space for change. Create space for therapy. Create space for mystery. Create space for prayer. Create space for grief. Create space for miracles. Create space for beauty. Create space for hope. Create space for today is today. But today is not forever. It's so beautiful. Thanks. It's so beautiful. And while you were reading it, I really felt like how everything is expanding. I'm like, okay, we're creating space right now together. It's it's beautiful. And I'm you wrote this poem before you had your child. Yeah. Yeah. I double checked the dates. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'll be, I'll be honest. I haven't been able to write too much since he's arrived. So <laughs> most everything was written before. <laughs> yeah. But I'm curious, even if it was like before that, um, mm-hmm. how do you think this poem reflects your journey of him blessing your lives? And especially what was the role of prayer? Because I know your journey was not easy. Yeah, sure. So uh, our my wife and I, we were a couple of years ago during the pandemic, we were diagnosed with unexplained infertility. And that led us to, um, to adoption, uh, which was, and that, you know, kind of goes back to our other, you know, parts of the conversation that we've already had, you know, how God is uh, a good gift giver, or we can even think about the teddy bear analogy, right? You know, we were holding on to what we thought our lives were going to look like. And behind his back, he had something even better than we could ever think or imagine. And a lot of that came down to, you know, trusting and surrendering and all the, all the hard things of, of wrestling through. Uh, and so we entered the, the, the adoption process uh, close to two years ago. And, uh, and then six months ago, we got a phone call that we had been chosen to become parents. We were, we were called on a Sunday morning that we had been chosen he was born that night and he was home on Tuesday. So our whole, our world was, you know, some people get nine months to prepare for a child. We had about 60 hours. It was very, it was very quick. Um, it was like, whoa, let's walk a little slower. Uh, no, I didn't say that. I was like, let's get this stuff done. <laughs> it was busy. It was busy. But, you know, I, I love the connection that you made for, for me with this poem, you know, and, and our walk through the adoption process and through infertility and all that. Um, it was, the, those were, it was really hard, you know, um, not, and not being able to be where we wanted to be or to be in a role that we wanted to, to be in. Um, you know, all we really wanted was to have a family while all the people around us seemed to be getting pregnant, um, starting families, having a child, having two children, having three children. Uh, and it was hard to watch that. It was hard to wrestle with the questions, with the wondering, with, with the grief, uh, with, with not knowing, with waiting, with really everything that's kind of part of this poem. And I think the poem kind of moves from a place of, you know, it just kind of goes from waiting to not knowing, to change, to therapy, to the mystery, to prayer, to grief, you know, and it's all kind of wrapped up into one big ball. Um, but, but being on, on where I'm at now and having Judah home with us, like I look back on these words and I, I, I still stand by them. They're true. Uh, you know, I, I really lean into some lines more than the others, you know, create space for prayer for us during that season. Prayer often looked like one big, honest exhale. It really looked like sitting with the silence. It, 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 I did not have much to say because the grief was so loud. It, It was really just like, I would ask for people to pray for us because it was so hard for me not to not, 
not to pray, but more so like traditionally say a prayer. Whereas I was the one that was speaking. I spent a lot of time just listening and being with God and not having anything to say because I had said it all. You know, I had said the same prayer of make it better or do what you only know how to do um, or help me to believe that everything is going to be okay. Um, And he hears it all, even the silence. uh, And he interprets it the way that it needs to be interpreted. Um, So looking back on these words in the last couple of years, I would, I would offer these words to anybody, especially that last line where for today is today, but today is not forever. Like change is coming and it might even be here. You know, I think one of the best, the best pieces of advice I can give to, you know, anyone is to pay attention because he's revealing, he's revealing and we just got to keep trusting. I'm so deeply moved which i already expected when i prepared this question yeah how first of all thank you for sharing this because i know it's it's um it's a per it's personal i know you shared on instagram but i nevertheless always am very grateful for people to open their hearts very wide because it helps others that are feeling something similar Mm -hmm. to have hope and also know that they are not alone right and also that things as you said will change yeah what helped you and your wife to transition from the picture you had for your family to letting go of that Mm. and then receiving something new you know like where you're like okay we are not going to have we are not going to conceive the way we were thinking or not the pregnancy yeah. we accept that probably that was grief and then like mm-hmm. okay now we are open for a new plan yeah well i, I think time played a, a big role in that of uh of the being pruned back or, or stripped down or creating space for there to be uh, time for uh, new roads to be paved, right? For us to travel down, to go in a new direction. Um, and then enough space and time to uh, kind of learn how to hold grief with one hand while holding out the other hand ready to receive what was next. Mm -hmm. If that makes sense. Um, And I, and to be honest, like I wouldn't, I am so happy the way that things, the way in which God worked and moved um, and the way that he brought us to be a family. Um, I mean, I love Judah so much. And it's just the cool, like it is the honor of my life to be his dad. Uh, it scares me, uh, but I love it. And I can see, and I hope he sees this too one day, of the way in which God orchestrated this, where it was like, this was, this is the way that it was, that God had put it together. Mm-hmm. Um So I, I'm like, I am just living in a world of thankfulness, uh, recognizing and seeing and doing my best, um, to hold this with hope, with love, with mercy, with gratitude, you know, um, and a lot of prayer. Now I have a lot of words to say to God (laughs) before it was a lot of silence. Now I'm like, okay, there's this, 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 and this. And also I would love to sleep. Uh, but it's just, I mean, it's like, it's just beautiful. It's all beautiful. I'm grateful you mentioned that some seasons allow us to speak a lot mm-hmm. while some seasons like lead us into silence. And I think it's a little bit like nature, you mm-hmm. know, like 
when you look at summer, everything is blooming. And then like autumn, the leaves start to fall. And then winter, there is nothing. Yeah. Unless you live in California. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> but I think also allowing ourselves to move for different seasons, whether it's mm -hmm. in our relationship, with ourselves, with our partners, with our work, with God. And sometimes all it needs is to be here, as you said earlier. Yeah. Yep. Just to be right, right here. That's it, I mean, it is, it's, it's hard. I mean, sometimes it is the seasons that you are in or that you face. Like, it's just like, I, I think we don't say it enough. Or maybe we do, and I just haven't been listening. But like, life is just hard. Like, it's just really, like, it's really hard. There's just a lot that's always going on. A lot of things that are changing. A lot of things just are not right or not as they should be. It's hard. Um, and maybe sometimes just saying that it's hard helps helps take the next step. It's. So true. I remember when my grandmother passed away, the first time I said it out loud, it is so hard. I even remember saying it like 10 times in a row. I was like, mm -hmm. this makes it much easier because I acknowledge it and it doesn't make mm -hmm. it easy, but it makes it lighter around the heart and the shoulders yes. and everything. And Tanner, I'm wondering, you have a gorgeous dog called Pancake. How, <laughs> how has your dog helped you through that season of life? So we, we brought pancake home the day the pandemic started. So he's a, uh, he's a bougie dog. He's a golden doodle. Uh, and we got a golden doodle because I'm allergic to dogs, which is very cruel. Uh, but he's going to bark here right in a minute. It's yeah. so funny that he oh, literally right, right now. Right on time. Right on time, buddy. Good boy. <laughs> no, he's losing it. There was a, there was a, there's a car, that, a UPS truck stopped right in front of our house. And so there's just, no stopping Great them now. Yeah. <laughs> All right, bud. We got it. Thanks, Pancake. All gone. No more. Thanks, buddy. I'm the only one home right now. So he's just, um, I mean, he's like, he's our therapy dog. Uh, but we brought him home the day the pandemic started. And that was kind of around the same time that we found out about we were, you know, diagnosed with unexplained infertility. Um, and it was just a really, really hard season. But he helped, you know, the two of us become a family. And I, I've heard people say before, they're like, you know, when we brought Judah home, they're like, you're not going to call Pancake the big brother, are you? And I was like, absolutely, I am. Of he certainly is. Yes. Uh, but I mean, he, he was the one who, you know, he was there for us through it all. Um, he brought my wife closer together. He also got us out of the house. He got us walking. He got us, you know, grief is a, grief is one of those things that it's just, it is hard. It is a, it is a, it's, you can't really explain it, but you learn after a while of how to walk with it, how to dance with it, how to carry it with you. And having pancake uh, with us helped us move our bodies. He helped us laugh. He helped us think. He helped us cry. He helped us do all the things. I mean, like the day that God created dogs, top five day of the world. Like he just, he knew what he was doing. He knew exactly what he was doing. <laughs> I mean, it's just there. It's, you know, they are our best friends for a reason. Um, mm. Yeah, I love Pancake. Even when he barks. <laughs> <laughs> but it was the perfect timing. I'm so glad he did that. Me too. It, I always love hearing the stories of our guests that they share when they got their dog and like what was happening around that time or also afterwards. And I think it's the proof that every animal in our life has a purpose mm -hmm. and comes with the purpose because there is not even like a coincidence in timing when we get them or when they find mm -hmm. us. And they are, every single dog is a therapy dog. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like absolutely. Yeah. And I'm not mm -hmm. saying unpaid because they do. <laughs> get yep. treats and food, free rent and everything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but they are therapy dogs. And also I think it just shows it doesn't need words to comfort and also 
to help heal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The dogs are, you... dogs are good oh, at being dogs. I was going to say dogs are, they're really good at, at being who, who God created them to be. You know, it's God wastes nothing. And, you know, certainly dogs just, I don't know, for me, pancake has taught me a lot about patience, a lot about myself, a lot about, um, about slowing down, but also like, just be where you are. Mm -hmm. like, and I mean, a dog is very trusting and I want to trust God the way that pancake trusts me, <laughs> you know? <laughs> That's so good. I love that. Yeah. It's so true. They, and also they show us when their trust was broken, like let's say for rescue dogs, for example, mm -hmm. you know, they went for like really heartbreaking phases of their lives. They are willing to trust again, you know, like they let you in again. And obviously it takes time, but I just think dogs in particular are really the proof of the reward when we open our hearts. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. And two questions. Yes. Why pancake the name? <laughs> and also what has he taught you? Because you said he's taught you a lot about yourself. What are like mm -hmm. some of the things that he has taught you? So the name pancake, it comes from a, a poem that I had written back in 2017. It's a poem that's titled Welcome. Uh, and so it's one poem that I perform at every show. Uh, but in it, 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 it says, you know, uh, and late last night I was sent a gif or a jiff while half asleep next to the other hold of me. And she couldn't see me giggling under the sheets as I watched a dog run into a glass door over and over and over and over. We had talked about getting a dog of our own and we will name him Pancake. So I kind of, that's I kind of spoke that into existence. Amazing. Um, a long time ago. And then when we were looking for dogs, I was like, well, I, I wanted a golden doodle. And so we went uh, and picked him up. And he was, you know, we, there were about seven or eight dogs sitting together. And uh, they were like, all right, pick out, pick out your dog. And I picked up the first dog I picked up. I looked at him and I said, pancake. I said, pancake. And he popped his head up and I said, all right, bud, That's let's go home. <laughs> so Amazing. that was him. Um, yeah, like I said, he's just taught me a lot about, um, about being, about patient, about being a patient person, being a, a patient person who trusts that everything is going to be okay. Um, and he's also shown me like he, every room he goes and he thinks that he belongs like he's just like this is of course i'm supposed to be here while why uh, and of course you want me here i'm always somebody who like i'm i'm nervous to enter into rooms where i don't know anybody i don't like knocking on doors cuz i well you know so but he has shown me like no you belong and you can believe that yeah that's so beautiful if you would yeah. write a new poem about pancake what title would it have <laughs> do you want a serious title or a joke like if it was a joke, I want a joke title, title i would say please please stop please stop <laughs> is that the title <laughs> but, yeah i think so yeah uh but i think <laughs> if it was a serious if it was a serious title i i, I don't I would, you know, something like welcome home, welcome home. Aww. That's beautiful. Yeah. I think that's what, you know, that like he is. Yeah. Cause he is, uh, he kind of exemplifies those words. Um, yeah. I just love this dog. Um, I can, I can see and I can feel that. <laughs> and to, to wrap up our conversation on a really funny note. What is something Pancake does that embarrasses himself? Oh, this this dog will hump anything. So yeah, he's just he just goes for it, and I'll, it's just after a while you're like I, 
do, okay, bud, we just got to stop doing this. So I don't know if you want to cut that out of the podcast, but that's just his thing. Yes, he's, no, when he's awesome. really needy or when he really has to go to the bathroom, he's like, just show me the closest leg and I will make sure you let the door, you know? So yeah, I, uh, we can't figure out, haven't been able to train that out of him. And I don't think that we're going to make that happen. Um, so now it's just laughable and yeah. That's his thing. But we also, we taught him to do a couple of uh, our favorite. So he has a couple of his tricks uh, before he eats. We do like high fives. So he'll just jump up and give us a high five. We do a little hug, a little kiss. And then we say our prayers. Aww. And so when we say amen, that, that's his cue to bark. Um, oh, that's so, amazing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he's, he's a fun guy. He's a fun guy. I love that. Yeah, I also pray with Felix um, before he gets his dinner. <laughs> he needs to wait. And then I say, okay. And then he's like, okay, okay great. <laughs> okay, great. Wonderful. <laughs> that is so funny. I love that. Yeah, some dogs just have um, different ways of showing their love, right? <laughs> he has no idea what he is doing, but he knows he is doing it. And I'll be honest, he's he gives it 100%. So that's all you can ask for. <laughs> You're hilarious. Yeah. Oh so I, it's a, it's a fun, he's, he's great. Uh, the other thing I love about him is he just like, you know, he's, a, he does a good job of connecting us with other people too. Um, mm. And uh, yeah. And he gives us something to talk about always. I mean, yeah, he's, it's good. But. Well, well, now that we wrap up our conversation, I can break it to you. I invited you because of him. <laughs> <laughs> Well, there's so many times like when I go and perform somewhere, I will be introduced as Pancake's dad. Because people are just like, <laughs> we like, you know, it's people are like, I like your dog more than I like you. And I, you know, I can't blame them. I can't, I can't. So I, if I could do a tour where I take Pancake with me to like uh, an evening of poetry and Pancake, I think that would be a hit. Oh, yeah. Sold out. Oh, I've probably. been traveling across the country for that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm going to do it. Next year, poetry and pancake. Okay, don't forget to send me an invite. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Tanner, thank you so much for this conversation. It um, mm -hmm. it was even greater than I expected it to be. It's it filled my heart with a lot of hope and also courage to walk a little slower. Mm -hmm. And to always believe today is not forever and things will change. And yeah. just thank you so much for sharing your time with us and your insights and also your humor. <laughs> and also say thank you to Pancake. Don't forget oh, that. Yes. <laughs> and yeah, um, I'm sure we'll have you again on the show because I will. <laughs> See? Yep. Yep. He's Pancake saying thanks agrees. for having us. Are you saying thank you, thank you? All right. Well, I guess I got to go. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for having me. It means so much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> it's a wrap for today, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. Please share this episode with anyone you love, anyone you want to like provide and give hope. And don't forget to tag Tanner and us. Send us a DM if you have more questions. We'd love to hear from you. And we'll see you next Wednesday.